Good morning everyone and welcome back to my channel English Literature. We have talked about university weeds and now we will talk about one of the most significant university weeds and he is Christopher Marlowe. Okay. Christopher Marlowe, 1564 to 1593 and 1564, the same year, who was born? Shakespeare. Shakespeare was born in the same year. And just um, two months uh, before Shakespeare was born, Marlowe was born. There is some uh, controversy or um, you can think that there is some contemplation that Marlowe is Shakespeare. But I don't think so or I know that you no one thinks so. But there is some type of trivial controversy regarding the identity of Marlowe and there is the that Marlowe and Shakespeare is the same type, this type of ambiguity there is. Anyway, we will talk about Marlowe and then later we will talk about Shakespeare. We will talk about Marlowe as a pre-Shakespearean dramatist. So there is enough scope for Shakespeare. Now Marlowe is an Elizabethan playwright and most influential dramatist before Shakespeare. Son of a shoemaker, John Marlowe and Catherine Arthur. 26 February 1564, two months before Shakespeare was born. That's why there is controversy regarding the identity of both of them. Even there is a speculation that they both are the same person. Anyway, that is a far-fetched idea and we will discuss Christopher Marlowe and Shakespeare as two separate beings. He was born and raised in Canterbury, England. He was educated at Corpus Christi College, Cambridge and later attended Cambridge University at the age of 17. 1584 he received his BA degree Bachelor of Arts and then 1587 his masters and then he went to London for from Cambridge and became an actor and dramatist for Lord Admiral's company there were several companies then for um, they were the administrator of the dramas and Marlowe joined in one of those companies. For the next six months, he wrote plays and got familiar with other writers. Little is known about Marlowe's life. He led a reckless life, very reckless life and got in conflict with uh, the law frequently for his atheism and heretic propaganda. So Marlowe was a different type of person who was very violent and again he was not uh, sorry to express his ideas whatever thing about his atheism uh, they are charged as a heresy but Marlowe was always bold and uh, brave he also joined in Queen Elizabeth's secret service carried out secret missions for the crown okay he was a spy spy of Queen Elizabeth his literary career started with the translation of Ovid's Amores. It was named Elysis by the publisher. So at first he was not <coughs> a dramatist, but uh, he was not a playwright, sorry, not dramatist, playwright, but he was first a poet. So he translated Ovid's Amores and the publishers gave it the name Elysis. His first original work was Tumbleline the Great. Tamerlan the Great was based on the historical 14th century Mongol conqueror Tamerlan. Both parts of Tamerlan the Great was performed in 1587 and 158 oh, sorry or 1588. This time both of them are performed and Marlowe became very famous and they are published in 1590. Now the source the Tamerlan's life by Spaniard Pedro Mexia a Spanish Renaissance writer and humanist and the source is Pedronius. But among those sources, uh, there is the evidence that Marlowe preferred these sources most by Mexica, Mexia. Now it is the story of a shepherd who became the most powerful man in the world. Slam dog millionaire. I just remember that. But Marlowe's superman does not follow the path of morality. 
Malo endows him with boundless arrogance and unbridled contempt for human life. A man freed from all types of morality, seek the maximum of strength by sensibility and crime. And Marlow himself being the emblem of paganism, rebellion, and against any dogma or orthodoxy of the holy Christianity, presented a man who is free from all morality. And you can say in this respect that Marlow himself is his characters, his protagonist of the dramas. Dr. Foster, Stumberline, in those characters who uh, did not follow the orthodox rules and regulation but go try to go beyond them may at the cost of even their doom but those are Marlowe and those are his protagonists Marlowe first used blank words here now the second one is the tragical history of life and death of Dr. Foster's it was published in 1604 it is a tragedy by Christopher Marlowe Probably written around 1588, Foster, a German scholar, sells his soul to the devil for 24 years. Keep it in mind. Not 26 or 34, it is 24 years of pleasure pursuit. Marlowe's Dr. Foster is the dramatization of the ancient German Faust legend. So that was Marlowe's source, Foster's source. With Dr. Foster, Marlowe popularized a style that is called Blank parts, you already use it. But with Dr. Foster's, it became popular. A non rhyming poetic verse invented by the sonnet writer Henry Sare or Earl of Sare in 1540s. Now, Marlowe introduced this style in his play and instilled blank verse with emotional force and rhythmic eloquence. So that is. Before that, uh, blank verse was used in poetry, but Marlowe in his plays used them and make them more forceful with emotional fluency. Marlowe gave this style a new dimension. It became the standard for English drama, this use of blank verse. Now next is the Jew of Malta, story of Barabbas, a devious shrewd Jew who was unjustly deprived of his goods for Christian and by an extraordinary series of crimes avenging himself on them. So what happened? Barabbas was a Jew who was unjustly deprived of his goods. But later he will take revenge and revenge after revenge finally bring his doom. In the beginning the Jews property was seized to pay the tax. So that is the unjust happened to the Jew Barabbas. The injustices he suffered made him cruel, wrathful. And in the beginning he draws the sympathy, being a man who is more sinned against his sinning. He is a victim of social and political prejudices. But ultimately he fell into the cauldron. So how did he die? It is very pathetic that he fell into a cauldron of boiling water. But it is again justifiable because he planned to throw his enemies in that cauldron of boiling water. So it was the justice for him in that sense. There is some important thing you have to keep in mind. The prologue was delivered by Nicholas Machiavelli, an Italian politician. In the drama, the prologue was delivered by Nicholas Machiavelli. Very, very important. You have to keep in mind that who provides the prologue in Marlowe's Jew of Malta, it is Nicholas Machiavelli. The writer of the prince and okay there is some Abigail is the daughter of the Jew and Ithamor is his husband this name I must mention it earlier not here anyway you have to keep it in mind now with the Edward II another play by Marlowe it is Marlowe sets the trend of historical play and it uh, telescope the uh, reign of Edward II okay so the trend of historical play that Shakespeare later used enormously and very successfully was set by Marlowe with his Edward II. 
the whole drama is structured the character piers gulston who was recollecting the reign of the king so the drama started with piers gulston who is actually recollecting the reign of king edward the second so this is very important to keep in mind now the massacre at paris depicted the events of 1572 saint bartholomew's day massacre you know sydney was then paris when this uh, massacre happened sydney that time was in paris and he himself witnessed sorry he himself wit uh, witnessed this massacre i cannot use the <coughs> eraser just cut a wave of catholic supporters violence against protestants in france resulting in huge death and the massacre of paris captures that destruction that mass slaughter okay dido queen of carthage was marlo collaborated this with thomas nash and it is not his original work he collaborated not his uh, only that he uh, himself is not contributed totally it was he collaborated with thomas nash and it was his first play okay the source was virgil roman poet plot dido's passion for aeneas the trojan hero who being shipwrecked landed on the carthaginian sorry carthaginian coast but aeneas later departed breaking dido's heart to pieces and there is a sub plot that is anna anna who is anna anna is dido's sister and he also fall in love with iarbas who actually is one of the suitors of dido so both the sisters only experience heartbreak maler also wrote poems among them hero and leander is the best it is based on the greek myth of hero and leander hero a devotee of venus lives a life of chastity and leander falls in her love this poem is called an epilian what is epilian short lyric uh, sorry short epic or little epic marlo was killed that is very pathetic before he could finish it hero in leander and george chapman finished it very very important who finished the hero in leander George Chapman English translator poet and dramatist he finished it and here i just written something about chapman because these are important chapman is famous for the translation of homer's iliad and odyssey and his play the tragedy of busidi and boys okay there is some note about chapman i just included this in marlowe's video just because the chapman is associated with marlowe in this respect that he completed marlowe's zero and leander His other poem is the passionate shepherd to his love. Come live with me and be my love. Is the first line of the poem. Okay, it may come in the exam that come live with me and be love ma, be my love. From where the line is taken? It is a lyric poem. Sir Walter Raleigh in his poem the nymphs reply to the shepherd replied this. Very important. So Marlowe's poem was replied by Sir Walter Raleigh in the nymphs reply to the shepherd. The nymph rejects the shepherd lover's appeal. The pathetic death of Marlowe. Marlowe's roommate was Thomas Kidd. When we talk about Thomas Kidd, we find this truth that Marlowe's roommate was roommate was Thomas Kidd, who was in prison on the charge of keeping heretic documents. But Kidd defended himself, saying that these things belong to Marlowe, not to him. 1593 at the very early age of 29 he was killed by fatally stabbed in a tavern brawl at Deptford there is a controversy regarding his death some scholars speculate that he was killed secretly for his heresy and atheism because he was becoming a uh, threat to the christianity he was buried in an unmarked grave why because he was charged of heresy have a look at the work of marlo at a glance plays by marlo and poetry okay so here we cover all the aspects regarding marlo and i feel that you have understand the journey of marlo's life his works and his pathetic death and how marlo molded his characters from his own thought and own perception 
सो थैंक यू